kind of came up at the same time. I actually fought on the same card he made his pro debut on back in 2008. And that was in Omaha, Nebraska. Download the All-Star app. Make your picks for UFC fights, challenge your friends, level up and win prizes. Link in description. Get it now. They reschedule you with uh, Drew Dober on October 7th. Um, you were supposed to fight him in early 2022. Was it a surprise? Was it an unexpected surprise? No, I, I figured we'd match back up again. Seems like they really wanted the matchup. Uh, you know, it's a great matchup. Uh, you know, probably ex- going to be an exciting, striking fight. And, um, you know, he's going to bring it. I'm going to bring it. So it, it's going to be a, it's going to be a good matchup. Is it, is it that simple? You know, it's, it's, it's going to be a good striking battle. You're going to bring it. He's going to bring it. What? Give us a little bit more, Rick. Like, why, why do you think they want this matchup so bad? I mean, we're two longtime Midwestern veterans. Kind of came up at the same time. I actually fought on the same card he made his pro debut on back in 2008. And that was in Omaha, Nebraska. I'm from Iowa, you know, central Iowa. And, um, yeah, you know, he's he's came up and he's fought on other organizations, obviously, too, just as just as well as me and um you know our, our time is finally you know things are coming to to connect and, and we're finally getting to match up i remember being on that same card as him and and you know he was good back then he made a good pro debut i think he won and and uh i kind of kept my eye on him thinking you know if he if he keeps at it you know we'll probably meet meet someday and sure enough here we are yeah man your intuitions were right man and it's incredible that you could fight on the same card your opponent is debuting on and then years later fight him at the top of the game. You know what I mean? That's wild. Yeah, what's that, 15 years ago? Man, that's a long time. That's a long time. But anyways, um, other than, you know, what you just said about him, what else do you remember? Do you, did you watch the fight or were you just like, oh, I, you know, he was fighting, but it wasn't nothing. Yeah, I, I, I remember parts of it, but he's, you know, he's a good striker, you know, really good kickboxing. He's, you know, big and strong and athletic. Um, you know, there's nothing too complicated about him. He's, you know, he's gritty. He's a tough, gritty guy. And me as well. Um, but yeah, you know, he's intelligent too. He's in, obviously, you know, we've both been in it for a long time, so we should we should have a lot of knowledge and and be a master in our craft. And um, you know, I'm coming in there, killer be killed. I know he's gonna try to rip my head off and knock me out like a lot of his other opponents. And I'm, you know, have that, you know, uh, not in my mind, but, you know, that that's there. You know, there's a uh, a big threat of him throwing some big, heavy bombs, and I got to be prepared for that. So I've been training my ass off, and, uh, you know, we've been scrapping, and everything's, everything's looking great. Would you rank him at the top of, like, maybe the last five fighters, maybe the most dangerous out of them? Do you feel that way? I think so. Yeah, he's definitely a dangerous guy. Um, my last five fights, probably, you know, I think Grant Dawson is a little more dangerous when it comes to the grappling, anyways. Um, and he's, I saw that he's the main event versus uh, Bobby Green. Grant Dawson and Bobby Green are main event in that our card. Um, so it's be interesting to see how that plays out too. Yeah, what do you think? What do you think is going to happen in that one? Because you know you got Bobby Green who's the guy that is like a flamboyant striker versus Grant Dawson, who will smother you and he won't stop. Yeah. He's just going to dive in at his legs. Um, I'm sure striking's got better since we fought, but I imagine him wanting to get Bobby green down, get on his back, rear naked choke or wear him down and ground and pound. And I, I think Grant Dawson's going to take, take the win though with that matchup. Yeah. But sometimes we see some weird things in, in the cage, right? Some guys you think, they're going to go in there and do a certain game plan and <laughs> they don't. And they try to like, all right, I'm going to test by striking this time out. And then they end up making a mistake. You know, and this is the, you know, it's, it's a, it's a dangerous game, man. Real dangerous. Yeah. Bobby's got some un- unorthodox striking too. The way he can throw, you know, throw from his hip pretty much with his punches. It's wild that he's able to get away with some of the stuff he, he does. And, um, it's pretty, pretty interesting. It is definitely interesting. And, you know, for yourself, you know what I mean? Um, the last fight, you got caught. Um, 
you know, it happens all the time in the sport. But you were coming off a, a pretty long layoff as well. Like, what was it, over a year? You know, did yeah, you feel any, like, effects of that? I don't think so. I mean, I, I felt great, honestly. I felt probably it was one of the best times I ever felt. Weight cut went good. Recovery went good. My, uh, you know, shakeout and um, warm-up for the fight was great. I, th- I felt really sharp, and there was something. Maybe – Maybe I didn't get enough sleep or something too. I, I did seem a little tired, but I was ready to fight. And uh, I just got in there and kind of hesitated. And sure enough, he clipped me with the the, the main punch that I was worried that they were going to be throwing. He hit me with, and I just I didn't react right, and boom, you know, fell. I thought it was an early stoppage. You know, I, I lost. Not complaining, not making excuses, but it's like, oh, dang it, that's some bullshit. But yeah. you know. Let him put a couple more on me, make it official. But I guess that once I popped up, I was like, "Well, at least I'm not on a stretcher. My jaw's not broken. I'm I'm okay. I can go home to my family and, and be healthy." You know, it all depends on the ref too. You know, what I mean, we just saw the main event in the pay per view that first round. Sean Strickland, you know, dropped Izzy, yeah. like hit him with I don't even know how many unanswered shots. Izzy even turned his back. They still didn't stop the fight. You know, what I mean, yeah. other refs, I thought they would have jumped in way before that and stop the fight. What did you think of that compared to like what you went through? Uh, I guess it's a little different with the championship fights, but I think they should all be the same, you know, like yeah. let it not unanswered shots, of course, but like, or if someone goes limp, like, you know, jump in or it's tough when, with, when someone gets knocked down from the conditioning and stuff over the years that we've done, like you might get knocked down from standing, but then a lot of times when guys hit the mat, boom, they, they're back to it and their conditioning will kick in where they might be a little rock still, but they can still recover from that. Whereas compared to like, you know, if you go limp, obviously you need to call the damn fight. But, and you've seen that before where guys are like just out there limp and then they rain down another big punch or a yeah. couple more. That's dangerous, of course. But like, if, yeah, if they just get knocked down quick, like, and they're still kind of like, let them recover a little bit. That's where I felt like, my last fight, I felt like I was at it. Boom, I know what he hit me with, and I fell. Bam, landed on my arm, you know, kind of posted. And I went to, like, kind of recover and get my arms and legs going. And then it was like, you know, I saw the ref was right there. Bam. I was like, well, what the heck? So that was kind of crappy. Yeah, I was, I was supposed to fight Dober. Yeah, it was like a year and a half ago or so. And I, I tore a tendon in my leg. It was in my groin. Um two weeks before the fight and I had to have, I had to have surgery to reattach it. I couldn't even, I couldn't work around it at all. So that was a long recovery process. And then I had that fight back in April and didn't go our way, but you know, I was bummed out for a little bit, but the best thing to do is just get back in the gym and work on my weaknesses. I've heard from other fighters that injury is probably the most painful I, from what I remember. Yeah, it's the worst like out of anything. How was it going through that pain, man, and, and the recovery? Because I'm pretty sure you couldn't really move around as much because you need your legs to do anything. Yeah, I couldn't pick my son up for a little baby. So I, that was kind of tough, not being able to pick my son up for two months and um, not be able to, you know, not be able to be the man I want to be and, and help and things like that. I was on crutches two months and then therapy for months and, and then kind of had to ease back into stuff. And, but I still did the things I could do. I was, you know, lifting with my other leg, doing my arms, doing doing any any kind of fitness PT stuff I could when I could do it. I was on it. After the last fight, how how long of a break did you take? You know, how long did they suspend you for? Uh, shoot, was it ninety days? I think it was ninety days. Yeah, I think they gave me a ninety day suspension. And uh, in between, or no, it was. Yeah, there was one fight I accepted a fight on. I think it was a week notice versus that Jamie Malarkey, and it didn't it didn't work out because I was still under suspension and they couldn't get it um, reversed or you know sus- they couldn't release the su- suspension on me for I think it was a month. Or, I don't know, but it didn't work out because of the su- suspension. And then I think there was yeah there was another that I accepted and then a opponent pick someone else 
Okay, so since been- before even the Drew Dober rescheduling, you had a couple of short nurse fights that you, you wanted to take. Yeah. It just didn't work. Yeah. Oh. yeah, I was ready to go. I was okay, ready. So you're eager, man. You're pr- you're back in camp training and I- everything after the last one. Oh, you were just redemption, like you said. I-, I camped out in the woods and, you know, spent some time in nature and just got right back at it. All right. All right. And for this camp, man, where are you working? You know, where who are you working with? I'm still working with uh, my jiu-jitsu coach, Carson Carlson, at Henzo Gracie in, in Des Moines, Iowa. And then I um, linked back up with Eric Koch here in Cedar Rapids at Revolution Martial Arts. And then um, I went up to Milwaukee a couple times and worked with the Pier Vita guys, Jake Clip, Zach Otto, Solo. Okay. And, and I, uh, I'm actually going to have Ben Askren in my corner as well. I, I trained with him just once. Um but he, he's always been great in my corner, and I hit him up after my last fight and asked him if he could help me out and be there. Um, so he's, you know, always, always, always had been great training friend. And, um, you know, it's, it's one of those things that's kind of tough for me to ask him for help because he's so busy with all of his academies and things. And, um, you know, same with the other guys. They, they got academies and they got families. And so when I do ask for help, it's like, you know, I really need it, but you know, I appreciate I appreciate my guys helping me out and, and giving me, you know, sharing their time, taking away from their families and and helping me pursue my goals and dreams and things like that. Even with a one session, you know, I mean, it makes a huge difference, I think, with somebody like Ben yeah. Askren, you know, the level yeah. he's at. Yeah, it really does. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, what are your expectations, man, in this fight? I know everybody's expectations is, is like, I hope these dudes throw hands and feet and elbows and knees until someone drops. What are your expectations? That, that put, I mean, I got pressure on myself, but not, I don't know, try not to put so much into it. And we're not, you know, crazy game planning and getting hung up into this, 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 this. I just want to take, take things at them. It'd be, be more present in the moment and be ready to explode when my opportunities are there. No hesitation. Just boom, go. Yeah, um, I think like in this one, a lot of people are just, they just want a fun fight. They're not really actually like rooting for one person or the other. They just see yeah. the names and they're like, yeah, this is a good matchup, man. We want this to just be entertaining. You know, yeah. we want the best fighter to win and, you know, let's see what happens, right? That's what I think the attitude is. Yeah. And there's like really no pressure, right? Outside of, you know, your own pressure that you put on yourself, like yeah, with own- fans and stuff like right. that, right? Yeah, the own pressure, like this is a fight Dober's been around for so long. He's done great in the UFC. This is this is a really good opportunity for me to level up in, in the company, my my career, my life. Um, you know, it could open up. Definitely going to help open up a lot of doors for me too. Yeah, man, I, I agree. I agree, agree. This matchup is a he's a big name. You know, I mean, at the moment, and you take him out, man, that puts you in his spot. You know, what I mean, yeah. like because he's like right there at the edge of the top fifteen as well. So, yeah. a very good spot him. to be in. Um. October 7th, man, UFC Fight Night, Las Vegas. Rick, thank you so much, man, for taking the time and all the best in the fight. Yeah, we've been talking about it. It's it's an extremely exciting matchup, and everybody's looking forward to it. Thank you. Appreciate your time.